All right, what's up guys? This is gonna be a quick video on the bulk campaign builder. So there's some pretty good instruction on the step-by-step -step, uh, guide for all the different types of campaigns you can build, but I don't have a great video, so I'm kind of reshooting this. I'm gonna focus mainly on sponsored products because that's the majority of use that the tool gets, but you can also do it on sponsored brand, sponsored display, uh, pretty intuitive. So <clears throat> basically the spot or the bulk campaign builder is this little arm tab. So just open that up and by default, it'll be set to keyword targeting. If you do wanna do product targeting, you just need to change the step one here and then auto is right here. So I'm just gonna do an example with keyword targeting. Uh, and then if you have existing campaigns, you can consult the guide. There's some instructions on this, but you have to choose update versus versus the manual option. So update means you're adding keywords to existing campaigns. Uh, if it's either set to auto or manual, that means it's a new campaign. So um, I'm going to do manual keyword targeting. That's going to be probably the most common use case and just come up here and you just kind of walk down through these four steps and you're pretty well done. So the first thing though, before we do that, that we need to set up our, our default settings. So if you want to do like, for example, mostly fixed bids or typically dy dynamic down only, you can kind of set that. This is just going to be the default settings when you kind of create your skeleton for for, for the campaigns that you want to create in bulk, this is going to be the setting. So if you always want it to be $15, you can set it there. Keyword bid, default default portfolio. So this one, actually, you need to know that to use this numerical ID. And you do have to create these campaigns in Campaign Manager before they show up in this Portfolios tab and give you this ID. So step one, if you want to use Portfolio IDs, is you have to generate those in Campaign Manager, and just go in and create a new portfolio and then download the new bulk file and it'll be in here. But then you can, if for example, always want to put them in a certain portfolio, you can drop that ID in here and it will be again in the skeleton. I'll show you that in a second. Same with placement. So if you always want to do like top search, placement percentage, say you always want to start out with 25% top of search, you can do something like that. Now, just know that you can override these on a campaign level. And if you keep them blank, that similar to the, how the template's set up, you can always add them uh, in the in each campaign when we get to that point. Vendor central mode, that's only applicable if you have a vendor account. Otherwise, you'll, you leave that unticked. And then this skew would be if you, for example, always want to have the campaign set to one product. I don't really know why you'd want to do that, but um, yeah, that's that. And the next thing is the naming scheme. So one nice thing about this tool is you can really customize kind of how you want your campaign ad group name set up. So it's pretty intuitive. You basically just set the order here. So right now the name scheme is going to say SP because that's kind of this static variable here that stands for sponsored products. And then next is going to be a dynamic variable for the ASIN. And that's based on the product you choose. Uh, then you've got the dynamic variable of the match type of whatever the campaign is you're creating. All right. And then over here, we've got just one input for our ad group name, which is the SKU. Again, you can change this to a different number if you want to add more details to it. You've also got a delimiter here. You can choose between pipe, a dash, or underscore. The custom is just allows you to add like another custom prefix or suffix if you want, and you can, uh, you know, type in whatever you want, and there's just put in the associated number as well. Campaign counter that applies for your campaign names to get a unique identifier if you have everything else is the same and you want to have multiple campaigns. And that'll just add like the number one, two, three. You can adjust it here if you want to start from a different value. Single keyword campaign mode. Yeah, and you can hover over these, by the way, to see what they mean. Single keyword campaign mode is typically applied if you have just one campaign, one ad group, one ASIN, one keyword. That's kind of the best structure. And then this will actually put the keyword that you have in your campaign. And I'll go ahead and show an example of that because it is pretty common but that puts the keyword in the actual campaign name. In this case, when we put in the ad group name, you just do that. Uh, and then the date. So the date will show up at the end of the 
at the end of either the campaign or the ad group. So you can customize this. I think it's, like I said, fairly intuitive, but just you kind of mess around with it. All right, so I'm gonna leave it set to that for now. And we're just gonna hop over here and step one, it's kind of got numbers here. So step one is choose your campaign type. So if we wanted to do ASIN targeting, we would pick this one here, but we're just gonna do keyword targeting example. All right, and then we're gonna create a single keyword campaign for exact match. And then I will do, so you can type in however many you want. So I'm just gonna do one exact match campaign and I'll do another broad campaign. You can see where it dropped in all the default parameters there. All right, so I'll do another broad campaign. So you just basically add in, you know, however many of the different match types you wanna do. And keep in mind, if you have to do them in different, in different bulk runs, if you're gonna do any, any that change here. So we're doing manual exact phrase and broad, you can do those in one run. But if you want to do auto, you have to do those in a separate run. And if you want to do product targeting, you have to do those in a separate run. So anyway, that's kind of the defaults there. At this point, if you did want to change anything, you could obviously do that. You know, I could change this to 30. I could delete this. I could delete this. I could change this to 20, whatever. All right. So Next step is pick the skew. So if you want to do the skew, you can just kind of drag things across. The only caution on that is if it has a number attached to the end and you do that, if you don't hold in like the control key or I think on Mac, it's probably command, it will increment the number. So you'll get an error. So just keep an eye on that. Make sure everything looks correct. And go ahead and you can add our keywords here. So I don't know, I'm just gonna type in keyword one. So this is an, an example of a single keyword campaign. If you recall, we've got our single keyword campaign mode on. So it's actually gonna add that, that keyword, I'll type an actual keyword. So I don't know, red ball. And then here we'll do big red ball. And then if you hold in control enter and on Mac it's probably command enter. See how it, it puts a carriage return and advances adapt, down a new line within the same cell. That'll allow you to big red basket ball, put multiple keywords. So that's an example of a multi keyword campaign. You can see it just kind of increments and counts up to give you a summary. If you did want to do any negatives, you could do, you know, ad group level is typically the most popular. So I don't know, ad group. So if you put in red. What's going on here? Red ball there. That's going to negate at the uh, negative exact negation. Now you can add more negations here. So red ball, whatever with stitching. I'll just make it crap up at this point, but you get the point. So once you've got everything in there, the next step is to update your names. So we're going to hit that. All right, so it does give you a reminder if say you run this and you don't like your naming scheme, you can hit uh, control, actually, it's just saying, you can only update your campaign names once per run. So you wanna, you wanna verify your, your defaults and your naming scheme before you run this. I'm gonna show you a way you can undo it though. It's, and it basically spells it out right here. You can hit control Z at this step right here if you wanted to back up. So if I hit control Z, you can see how it backs up. So if I hit control Y, it executes it again. And you can see what it did. So it plugged in our red ball for our single keyword campaign. Now you can see it also plugged in both of these keywords. So if you want to do a bunch of single keyword campaign runs, and then maybe like multi keyword campaign runs, you may want to run those in two separate batches. So you don't have to go through your campaign names and remove that like that. So, but you can override these at this point if you do want to tweak your campaign names. Same with your ad group names. Here's the SKU that got popular. Or I'm sorry, the yeah SKU. I think yeah we had it set to SKU. So that's what that did there. All right, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Once you have things dialed how you want, you literally just come up, create campaign upload file, hit sponsored products.
All right, it's going to generate your file. You can see we've got our negative keywords here. And if you do want to change your target level bids, this is the time you would do it because it just sets all of them to whatever that default uh, keyword level bid you set. So you can come in here at this point and say, oh, I want to put this at 75 cents. I want to put this at a dollar, this at a dollar. You can also make changes to your, you know, anything in here is still subject to, to change if you want. So if you want to change your placement percentage here to 25, you could do that. And then when, when you're ready, you're just going to come up here and export it. It's going to be good to go. So it's going to send it to your FBA Excel export files folder, and then you upload it through uh, campaign, or I'm sorry, bulk operations manager, and you're good to go. So that is pretty much it. I'll hit OK. The only other thing is to clear the tool. You can just go back and hit the clear button down here and it's going to wipe out your, you know, these existing campaigns and then you can start from scratch. Now, a couple other nice features here. So let's pretend I had a list and I'll just make that over here. So let's see, big red ball, big red basketball. All right. So we, we have a list of three keywords. You pretend if you had like 20, it'd be more applicable. All right. So what you could do is let's say, let me just do it with two of them. I'm just going to grab these first two. All right. So what you do is double click and you can put them both in the SIP first cell here. If I come up here and click transpose keywords, it's just going to split them across here. So yes, and that's a good way if you got a bunch of single keyword campaigns to transpose a vertical list to a horizontal list. And if you had, you know, 30 campaigns, it's a lot quicker than going through one by one. All right. And then the other use case is let's say we had a big keyword list. I'm just going to repeat this a few times and got a total of nine. Let me do one more. All right, so let's say I have 10 keywords and I'm going to come back here. All right, and same deal. I'll put them all in here in the first one. And let's say I want to split them and do five and five. So I'm just going to come up here, split and transpose. And you want to say yes. And then how many terms do you want to split? I want to do uh, how many terms? I want to do five each one. Hit OK. All right, so now it's got the first five in this one and then the second five in this one. So a couple different utility tools there that can help your efficiency out. Uh, and that's pretty much it for this video. If I, Again, if you want to uh, do the other types, you do just follow along with the step-by-step -step training guide. There's, you know, how to create. Oh, I didn't actually touch on that. So multi-skew campaigns. Uh, if you do want to put two SKUs in one campaign, you can actually hit control enter and you put the SKU two right here like that. So it will override the data validation, but it will put two ad group level rows in your output file here. So you'll just see the two there. If you do it that way, you can do you know more than two and that's how you do it. Alrighty. So hopefully this training video helps and I'll see you guys on the next one. See ya.